Jesus Christ this morning. Hallelujah. We are in the land of the living. Look at you this morning. We are here on this Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Pillars of Truth Ministry this morning to our 9 a.m. service. Amen. We are glad to have each and every one of you here with us this morning. Pillars of Truth Ministry a church in the heart of the community with a heart for the community. Amen? God knows your heart this morning and what you are going through. I may not know, but God knows it. But you're in the right place this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Look at the person next to you and say, it's good to see you. Look at the person, the next person and say, you look nice. You look real nice. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. A lot of people didn't make it this week. We saw the news. But you are here this morning in your right mind. Hallelujah. And we give God the praise, thanks, honor, and the glory. Hallelujah. You have something to be grateful for this morning. Amen. Welcome, I welcome you on behalf of our senior pastor, Apostle Reverend Dr. Dale Levines, and his beautiful wife, First Lady Pastor Dawn Levines, and the leadership and membership of Pillars of Truth Ministry. I warmly welcome you. Amen. And to our online viewers, welcome. Share, click, like, subscribe. Don't just keep it to yourself. Amen. Let them know Pillars is on. Welcome to from your viewing from the Caribbean, Europe. Africa, Asia, we welcome you this morning to Pillars of Truth Ministry. Let's give them a round of applause. Welcome. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the psalmist says this morning, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye, all ye lands. Amen. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that had made us and not we ourselves. Amen. So enter into with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise this morning hallelujah father we bless your name this morning 
We give you a high note of praise in this place, God. We ask you, God, that you fill us with the power and presence of your Holy Spirit this morning, oh God. Father, take full control this morning, God. Your worship team, God, your word, your ministry of song, Father, we cover everything under your blood this morning, Father. And we say, take full control. Take full control this morning, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. At this time, I'd like to welcome Sister Luan Williams, who will do our scripture reading. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Can we turn our Bibles to Psalms 119? Psalms 119 from verses 71. And it reads, It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy status. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in thy word. I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thou in faithfulness has afflicted me. Let I pray thee, thy merciful kindness be for my comfort, according to thy word unto thy servant. And the last verse, we can all read it together. Let thy tender mercies come unto me, that I may live. For thy law is my delight. God bless you. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord is blessed. So tell your neighbor, give me some room. And tell your neighbor, say, I don't know what you came to do. But I came to glorify the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Sister Alicia and the worship team. Bless the Lord. Could somebody say, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, he's merciful this morning. And we are privileged to be in the land of the living. Hallelujah. 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 We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Could somebody say hallelujah? Could somebody say hallelujah? God is good. Jesus, thank him for life, thank him for breath this morning, oh Jesus. In the morning when I wake up, I will sing my praise to you, my Lord. I will shout, I will dance to you, for you have been my help forever and ever. God is good, oh. hey, hey, my God is good, oh. hey, hey, my God is good, oh. hey, hey, my God is good, oh. in the morning when I wake up, I will sing my praise to you, my Lord, I will shout, I will dance to you, you have been my help forever and ever. Oh, yeah. 
you love Every day of our life, Lord, we worship you, Lord. 
We praise you. Lord, we worship you. Sister Antonia Mitchell John, one time to the podium to continue to bless our heart in music. Amen. Put your hands together, Sister Antonio. Jesus. 
Jesus come Let today be the day Sometimes I feel Like I'm going to pray But I'm holding on To a hope that won't fade So come to
to ride on our roads. We need you right now. Come and turn us around. It's deep down we know. It's deep down Jesus, this time as the man of God would make his way and finally, probably deliver the word this morning. God honors your commitment. Put your hands together for the man of God this morning. Pastor Lex Francois. Thank you, Sister Stephanie. Bless the Lord, could somebody clap your hands for Jesus? <laughs> At the center of it all is you that I see. Could somebody clap your hands for Jesus this morning? He's alive and well. There's a song that says, get all excited. Go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. He is still the Lord of Lords. He is still the Almighty God. He is still the I am that I am. Could somebody clap your hands for Jesus in the house? We say put on the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We have the victory. We have the victory. If you have been given the victory, could you shout hallelujah? Could you shout glory? Could somebody make some noise unto the Lord this morning? God has been good to me. Has God been good to you? Has God been good to you? You see, quite often we focus on the problems that we are experiencing. And we don't put our eyes on the problem solver. He's the one that can solve every problem that we came here with this morning. He's the deliverer. He has already won the battle for us. The battle has already been won. All you have to do is embrace it this morning. Let's focus on him. At the center of it all is you that I see. Let me worship the Lord this morning, somebody. It's you that I see, it's you that I see. Let's sing at the center of it all. At the center of it all, it's you that I see, it's you that I see. Let's sing that one more time, at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. It's you that I see at the center, at the center of it all. It's you that I see. Happen in his name. Miracles 
Turn your Bibles with me to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 12, continuing from last week. Amen. Giving honor and respect to the Spirit of God in this place. And uh, to our pastor, Apostle Dr. Dale Devines, for giving me the privilege to minister the Word of God to you this morning. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I also greet those of you who are listening to us via social media uh, networks, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, etc. It's a pleasure to have you with us. We encourage you to continue to subscribe, like, and share. Amen. Greetings to those of you who are listening to us of the Caribbean, North America, Europe, across in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. Greetings to you from here at Trinidad and Tobago at Pillars of Truth Ministries. Bless the Lord. God is good. God is good. Second Timothy 1.12 says, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know 
whom I have believed in, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Father, we thank you for your word, for it is forever settled in heaven, and your word is already blessed. Let your word go forth with power and the anointing to transform our lives, to break yokes, to set the captives free, to undo the heavy burdens in the mighty name of Jesus, to loose the bands of wickedness. Father, we charge your blood in the atmosphere of this sanctuary. We charge your blood over the live stream, over the airwaves. The supernatural power of your presence can break yokes, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we declare sickness shall leave. We declare and we curse the spirit of infirmity. In the mighty name of Jesus, loose and set your people free. In Jesus' name, and we thank you. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. Could you clap your hands to the Lord? And tell the person next to you, it's good to see you. And you can have your seats. Just continuing from where I left off last week. God rewards your commitment. That's the theme of the message. God rewards your commitment. I said to you that commitment in scripture means to roll as in a wheel. To roll away, roll to, roll onto. And I give a brief explanation of our commitment. We are committed to God and he's committed to us. Tell your neighbor, God is committed to me. You're not talking to your neighbor. Turn to the person next to you and say, God is committed to me. You see, sometimes you may fail, you may falter, but God is still committed. The scripture says he is faithful who had promised. Because sometimes you don't meet the requirement. You don't meet the required standard. But God is still committed to what he has promised. He is still committed to fulfill his word in your life. He is still committed to see you through to the end. He is still committed to make sure that you are delivered. He is still committed to ensure that you are healed. He is committed to ensure that you are satisfied or you are provided for. God is committed. Tell the person next to you, I don't know where my next meal is coming from, but I know that God is committed to me and I wouldn't go hungry. He's committed. When you are committed, we may lapse sometimes as human beings. We may falter sometimes. But I want you to understand something. You see, we may start out strong, but somewhere along the road, we begin to give up. We begin to fade in our strength. But God is still committed. When you fail, He is still committed. They're faithful as ever. God is faithful. He never fails. The scripture says, God is not a man that he should lie. Not as some men count slackness, but God will always fulfill his word. The scripture says, his word will not return unto him void. Tell your neighbor, I don't know about you, but I'm committed. Tell your neighbor, I'm committed. I'm setting you up this morning. I'm putting you on the spot this morning. You have to talk to your neighbor. Talk to the people next to you. We talk a lot in this church here. Right? So tell your neighbor, I'm committed. You see, you know you're committed. But you're not reaching the goal. You're not achieving yet. Because something is just not working out right for you. And you're discouraged. When you're discouraged, it doesn't mean that you're not committed. There are people who are discouraged, but they press on. They press on. We'll get to that in a little bit. I want to share two quick points with you this morning. 
We have to stay committed. That's number one. Stay committed in the face of challenges. Hmm. Stay committed in the face of challenges. Like I said, there are many who start together with you. But they're not here with you. Some fall away. The scripture tells us that in the last days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Some will not stay the course because their commitment was not sound. Committed means to put the power into the hands of another. Put the power into the hands of another. And I said to us on the last occasion that we have placed the power in the hands of the Lord because he is the only one that is able to deliver. He is the only one that is able to save. He is the only one that is able to heal. He is the only one that was able to go to the cross so your sins was committed upon him and placed on the cross and your sin was taken out of the way. And I said to us that God said to Israel he would remove the reproach of Egypt from off of them. And I said to us, when we give our life to the Lord, sometimes some things from our past may tag along. You remember that? It may tag along, but the reproach tags along because sometimes people see you and they remind you of your past. They remind you of where you came from and they try to assert to you that that's who you are. But I'm here to let you know that the scripture says, God said he will remove your reproach. In other words, he is going to change your position in society. He is going to change your status. He is going to change your financial position. I'm here to tell somebody this morning that your financial condition right now will not remain the same. It is about to change. I'm here to tell somebody this morning that your financial status is about to change. I'm here to tell somebody this morning that the condition that you find yourself in you will not be there forever because God is about to change your situation because he is committed when we are committed in the face of challenges God is well able and positioned to show himself strong on your behalf the shame the reproach the name callings he said, I will move it off of you. I'm going to move it off of you. They're going to see a new person. That's why the scripture says, Behold, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. He made you anew. He takes away the reproach. So they can't call you the same thing anymore. You could lift your head up high, somebody. You can walk proud. You can walk on your toes. You understand? Because there are some people in society where they look, the, look down on you. And they step on their toes. Or stepping on their toes. They walk proud. But I'm saying to you this morning that you can walk proud. You can make a statement this morning because your reproach have been taken away. The scripture says he nailed it to the cross. Everything that was contrary to you and against you, all the legislation that condemned you have been removed. There is none to condemn you. When Jesus was speaking to the crowd because they brought before him the woman taken in adultery. What did he do and what did he say when he began to write in the sand? And he looked up because he made a statement, he who is without sin cast the first stone. And they began to disappear one by one. One by one. Because back then it was kind of one-sided. The woman was caught in adultery by herself or with someone. 
So they weren't dealing with the someone. So Jesus had to bring balance. Somebody say balance. Somebody say balance. Somebody say balance. <laughs> he had to bring balance because he knew she wasn't caught in adultery by herself. She was in adultery with somebody. But they were focused on her alone. That's why he said, he who is without sin cast the first stone. He had removed your reproach. He had taken it out of the way. That's why the people who are in your life antagonizing you are disappearing one by one. Because God is dealing with them for you. He will remove the reproach. Tell your neighbor, God is committed to me. Stay committed in the face of challenges. In Daniel chapter 3, we know the story very well. Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Some pastors say a bad Negro. <laughs> there is always a bad boy in the set. <laughs> Somebody always giving trouble. Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There's a lesson for us to learn in their circumstances and what they went through. They were committed to serving God regardless of the challenges they faced. They were staring death in the face. Because the king, Nebuchadnezzar, he set up an image and he said everyone must bow down and worship when they hear the manners, all manners of music being played. So when the music began to sound, these guys stood up without bowing. And what make it more significant, they were Jews living in the Babylonian Empire or in this province. And they had responsibility or authority in the kingdom. They were placed in positions of authority. If you read the scripture, you will see they were in charge of this and charge of people and they were in charge of something. They had authority, positions of authority. And when you defy the king, you will die. They didn't used to make joke in those times. It was very, very brutal. Now we have all kind of human rights organization saying no punishment. They were brutal. So they were destined to die. Because they disobeyed the king. They rebelled. They were threatened with death by the king. They were men with responsibility. They were officials in Babylon. The men who bound them were destroyed by the fire. Sometimes the people who try to get you in trouble destroy themselves. That's what happened here. They plot against these three Hebrew boys. They plot against them because they stood up for righteousness and the worship of their God. I want you to understand something, child of God. In the face of your challenges as a believer, they will come after your faith. They will come after your God. They will come after you. You see, when your mind has begun to weaken because of the pressures that comes against you, it would be easy for the enemy to have a root in your life. But we need to stand strong. Tell your neighbor, stand strong in the face of the challenge because when you commit yourself to the Lord, He will make even your enemies be at peace with you. When you commit yourself to God in the face of the challenges, it looked like it ain't going to work out for me because sometimes you actually feel like giving up, you know. I don't know who you are this morning, but I can tell you sometimes you feel like throwing in the towel. So because we are pastors, we don't experience problems too. Just like anybody else, we experience challenges. Say to your neighbor, we all go through something. And when you're going through problems, that's the time some people just position themselves to 
had insult to injury. That is the time they find themselves. You want to know if they have a crystal ball, the working black magic or something, because you ain't tell them nothing, but they know something wrong. You know why? They're marking you as a believer. They're watching you. They're watching you. You may think they're not paying attention. They're watching you good and proper. So they're marking you. And that's the time they find themselves right in place to wait till they're passing. And sometimes in front of people, you know, to mock you and tell you something, to insult you. My God, have mercy. I want you to understand something. You see, the scripture says to me, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them out of them all. The Lord delivered him out of all of the challenges, all of the afflictions that comes your way. So I'm encouraging you this morning to hold the faith because God is well able to deliver you. Don't give up in the face of your challenges. Don't give up in the face of they who taunt you. They who expect you to fall. Because sometimes they put a limit on you. They expect you to last two weeks. They expect you to last three months. They say they're not even giving you a year. But let you are standing still. Because God has kept you. Because of his goodness and his mercy that is chasing after you. Because of God's goodness you are still here. His goodness and his mercy shall chase after me. Even when it is difficult, I will hold on because I know my Redeemer lives. Don't throw in the towel. Say to your neighbor, don't throw in the towel. Say to your neighbor, we will make it. God is something else. <laughs> Say to your neighbor, say, God is something else, you know. When we use the term show off, we think it does not apply to God, but God shows off. Watch what God did. When these guys refused to bow and they defy the king, they rebel against the king. The king gets so mad, he didn't have time to think. Heat up that furnace seven times I will do for them today. Throw them in. So the scripture says, the men who bound them to throw them in the fire, they were slain by the fire. I said to you, your enemies who try to wrong you or try to get at you, God will deal with them for you. So that's why sometimes all you have to do is focus on God and not the problem. And on top of that, the Lord showed up inside the fire. Because Nebuchadnezzar said, I'm not seeing three, I'm seeing four men inside the fire. You see, when you're committed to God, I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. And my future looking well, because the Lord goes ahead of me to make the path straight. In other words, God is going before you to ensure that it is well with your soul. Tell your neighbor, God has gone before me and I see a victory down the road. He is able. God showed up inside of the fire and the scripture says, they were loose and walking around. And the king was surprised. Now this king had to change his heart, change his mind because he had placed himself in the place of God. He said to himself, there is no other like me. Because he placed himself as a God, you know. But after the experience of Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he realized that there is a God in Israel. A God, the God of Isaac, Jacob, the God of Israel is alive. And something that we need to take note of. You see, God cannot be boxed in. You cannot keep him in one place. 
I'm saying that to us because you feel that God over here is not God over there. God is God everywhere. The children of Israel thought that he remained in Jerusalem, but he showed up in the fire in Babylon to deliver them, and he became the omniscient one. He became the omnipotent one because they realize now that God can go anywhere that they go. They thought that he was only in the temple in Jerusalem. But now they realize that God is everywhere. He showed up in the fire. Let me tell you something, somebody. When you're committed to God, it doesn't matter how hot the fire is that you are in right now. If you're committed to him, he will show up in the fire to preserve you. You see, we must commit our hands, our heart, our life to him. And when we place it in his hands, that's what it means. We roll it onto him. We place the power on him because he is able to do it because we can't do it for ourselves. He will show up in the midst of your situation to deliver you. He will show up in the midst of your sickness to bring healing. He will show up in the midst of that confusion to bring calm and order. Somebody say order. He is able. It doesn't matter what you're going through. You see, sometimes you feel that you are alone. You have a wife, a husband. You have family members that are saved. But sometimes when you're going through your situation, you feel alone. Even though they are there encouraging you and trying to motivate you, you feel alone because this is you and God. Say me and God. Say me and God. Me and God. It's God and I. It's God and I. Because it's you and God. It's he and you alone. When you're committed to him, he is going to show up. Make it personal. He will show up to deliver me out of my hand, out the hands of my enemies. He is well able. Because he would remove the shame. Bless the Lord. Secondly, be resolute in commitment. Tell your neighbor, be resolute. We have to have strong minds. We have to have strong minds. I used an example some time ago. Well, there are some guys who have lyrics to bad. And they could sweep a woman off her feet. Because the tongue silver. And in Wednesday night Bible study, I said, we're dealing with the spirit of deception. And some of them tongues so good that by the time they finish talk to you, you give them your house, you give them your car, you give them your land, you give them everything because first they're good. You understand what I'm saying? They have a silver tongue. You're pretending all they know what I'm talking about. You all can remember, ladies, when the man come and start to whisper in your ears and you start to laugh, you feel something tingling in your belly and you're thinking... And you don't want to hear your parents anymore and anything the man tell you you're doing. <laughs> All you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you have a silver tongue. But we have to have strong minds. When our mind is not strengthened, we are easily removed from our foundation. It is important for us to have stability. Say stability. We must have stability in our lives or in our relationships. That's important. We must not be shaky. Every time this one says something to you, you're gone. If that one says something, you're gone. You must have some kind of stable relationship. And you must know something for yourself. Tell your neighbor, say, know something. Tell your neighbor, be strong in your mind. The scripture says, let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus. It's important for us to have the mind of Christ. That's the mind of a servant. A mind that is committed and will not be shaken regardless of the situation. He is resolute. The word for resolute 
in the scripture, uh, a Hebrew word, shakar, uh, shazak, C-H-A-Z-A-Q, shazak. Somebody say shazak. It means to be firmly resolved or determined. It means to set in purpose, to be set in purpose or opinion. It also means to grow strong. It means to be courageous. Say it to your neighbor, be courageous. And it means to become hardened. Not hardened like you don't want to hear when people talk to you. But hardened in your resolve of righteousness. That's important. We know the story of Ruth and Naomi. In Ruth chapter 4 verse 13 to 17, when you read there, you will see that their husbands, in the previous verses, in the previous chapters, their husbands died. So now Naomi was going to return to her people in Israel from Moab. Moab is across the Jordan River in modern day Jordan. So she had to go west across the Jordan River back into Israel. Because there was a famine and things became difficult. And Ruth's husband also died. So they were in a situation where they didn't know where the next dollar was coming from. I want you to understand the difficulty. Famine taking place. Husbands died because of war and so on taking place. And uh, they were left alone. Now Ruth did something. She committed herself to Naomi. And not only that, she committed to the God of Naomi. She said, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. And where you go, I will go. She committed herself. And I want you to understand something we're dealing with. God rewards your commitment. Because that's what he does. And because she committed herself to the God of Israel, her fortunes began to change. Because of her commitment, Ruth became the grandmother of David. You all remember that story? She married Boaz. Well, Boaz married her because he saw the young thing and he said, I want this girl. Can I be real? You all, you all, you all need to understand something. You see the culture of the day. Sometimes we, we want to be so politically correct that we miss the message. When he saw her, he fell in love with her. So Boaz married Ruth because of her commitment to Naomi. Her commitment to Naomi's God. Her fortunes had begun to change. Boaz was rich. She never used to worship the God of Israel, but she now became a worshiper of the God of Israel. And because of her commitment, her fortune changed that she became one of the bloodline of Jesus Christ. What I'm saying to you is, because of your commitment, you can make history. Because of your circumstance, the God of Israel will get in the midst of it and change it for you, changing your history. It's important for us to understand, child of God. You see, where you are right now is not what God has destined for you. This is not the end of the road. God has great plans for you. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose which will prevail. You see, you plan just this limit because you limit yourself. But I'm here to let you know we cannot limit God or box in God because I have not seen, I have not heard, neither had it entered the heart of man the things that God has in store for them that love him. God has great plans for you and your destiny will change because of your commitment to God. Somebody say, God is committed to me. The 
this is not the end of the road. You see, people with their physical eyes seeing you as you are. But that's not what God sees for you. He's seeing something greater. Tell your neighbor, God has great plans for you. He has reward for your commitment. I'm closing with this. David was a shepherd boy who was insignificant because he had elder brothers and they were tough. They were strong looking. So they were a fighting age to be in the army. Because at that time, Israel was at war with the Philistines. You all see what is going on today? Israel is still at war today. So David, the scripture says, was Rudy. Sometimes I use the term, he looked like a pretty boy. You all understand the terminology? In other words, he looked like he can't touch the sand at all. He can't do hard work. But he was a shepherd tending his father's sheep. But David had heart. Somebody say heart. A heart that was committed to God. And because of his commitment, God say, we are looking at the outward appearance, but he sees the heart. Tell your neighbor, be committed in your heart. Heart is important. God sees the heart. Man sees the outward appearance, but God sees your heart. And God saw that David had a heart of commitment. And he put David through some training which he wasn't even aware God was preparing him to lead Israel. I'm saying to you, because of your commitment, God will change your destiny. Your neighbor might determine death for you. Your neighbor might determine destruction for you. Your neighbor might determine, might determine some failure for you. There are people who are determining failure in your life. But God says, I will bless you with good success. And it doesn't even stop there. Because he is changing your destiny for you to make history. I will also bless your seed there that come out of you. Your children will be blessed. Don't get caught up because some of them going astray right now. I'm saying to you, child of God, he said, your seed will be blessed. And I will hold God to his word. God, if my seed is blessed, you need to bring them in. Wherever they go, you need to bring them back. You need to establish them. What we need to pray right now for them, God, keep them safe. Because of your commitment, God will make the change in your destiny, child of God. It's important for us to understand that. So they're looking at David's outward appearance. But God said to the prophet Samuel, no, not those boys, not those guys, not really him. They went and sent, called David. And when he came, Samuel and all was taken aback. But he's so small and nasty, this boy. God, what you're saying? That's when God said to Samuel, man, watch it the outward appearance, but I see the heart. And David became the greatest warrior king Israel ever had. <laughs> Commitment. Tell your neighbor, when you're committed, God will do the rest. Let me tell you something as I close. It is not my business to worry about the outcome. It's my business to obey God. Because if he said it, he will do it. It doesn't matter what it looks like right now, but God is able to fulfill. Could you stand with me this morning?
Matthew 24, verse 46 says, If the master returns and finds that the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. As servants of God, we will be rewarded. In Matthew 25, verse 21, it says, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Here what the New Living Translation says, the modern English. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful and handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Last week I said to you, don't study the celebration police. Hear what the scripture says? <laughs> celebrate together. Celebrate together. When you are committed to God, God will reward your commitment to Him. Sometimes it's difficult. People of God, hear me. Hear me. When Jacob wrestled with the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord said, let me go because the day breaketh." But Jacob was determined. How determined are you? He said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. I am not giving up until God fulfill his promise. Jacob held on. And the angel of the Lord representing God had no choice but to bless him. Change Jacob's destiny. Change Jacob forever. Your commitment to God means that God is committed to change in your circumstance. He will do it once you remain faithful. Tell your neighbor, stay faithful. Stay committed. Because God is well able. He is well able. He is well able. Hallelujah. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. There is power. to your heart and you're in a difficult position 
you feel like giving up. You feel like throwing in the towel. We want to open the altar. You can come forward this morning. And we would pray for your strength. We would pray for your miracle. We would pray for the Lord to turn around your circumstance. Whatever that is. It's between you and God. Remember, it's God and I. It's not you and the neighbor. It's good for people to encourage us. It's good for them to be there for us. But at the end of the day, you must commit to God. Only He can deliver. Only He can satisfy. Only He can heal. If you're here this morning and you want to give your life to Jesus, we want to ask you to come. If you have never made him and you want to do so this morning, you have the opportunity. Make Jesus your Lord. He is able to deliver you. He is able to save you. He is able to make it right. He is able to turn around your situation. He is able. God can do it. God can do it. open this morning. The altar is open this morning. God is able. Let us help you in the right direction this morning. Sometimes you can't do it alone. He is your strength. When you feel like giving up, He becomes our strength and our song. with you we pray for your strength we will help strengthen you father in the name of Jesus I pray for your sons and your daughters God we pray that in the time they feel like throwing in the towel that they can't go on no more 
your spirit would minister to them you would give them the strength that is beyond their natural abilities you would pick them up oh god and you would carry them in the mighty name of jesus we pray that when their strength begin to fail, that you would step in, O oh God, and the power of your spirit would rise in them and help them to carry on in the mighty name of Jesus. God, so they will fly the flag and the banner of your kingdom high in the name of Jesus this morning. Minister unto them, O oh God. Touch them, touch them from the top of their heads down to their toes, O oh Father. Let them feel the supernatural power of your spirit moving upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against the spirit of discouragement. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We come against the spirit, O oh God, that comes to cause destruction. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We rebuke every spirit that had been sent on assignment to destroy their lives in the name of Jesus. Their hold is broken. And we release the anointing of the living God upon them that they would be strengthened. They would walk in authority. They would walk in the authority. They would walk in the God-given authority. In Jesus' name, strengthen them, minister to them. God, let there be sweet fellowship with you and your people. In Jesus' mighty name, send people into their lives who would be a comfort, who would be an encouragement and a motivation for them, who would impart and, oh God, who would affect their lives supernaturally that they would continue on the road to victory. In Jesus' mighty name, cover them with your blood. Cover them with your anointing. Cover them, oh God. Strengthen their minds today. Let the mind of Christ be formed in them. Let them be resolute, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And let them stand on your foundation, which was already laid. In the mighty name of Jesus. And somebody clap your hands for Jesus this morning. God is a good God. God is a good God. Isn't God good? The scripture says his goodness and his mercy shall follow you shall follow me it shall follow us all the days of our lives it means he shall chase after you wherever you go he has gone before you to make the path straight to make preparation for your arrival that's what the scripture means it's a con present continuous tense God never fails God never fails way maker Hallelujah. As I turn over to make a miracle work, a promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, and that is who you are. Oh, 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 oh. Way make a miracle work, a promise keeper, light in the darkness. This is Apostle Devines thanking you for viewing our live stream today. My prayer is that your hearts were blessed by our ministry and you're encouraged to contend for the faith. Join us again next Sunday for another power-packed message as God continues to speak to us. God bless you and your entire household. Remember, the giant in front of us is never bigger than the God inside of us.
Yeah.